It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. I already have a table full of rocks here. Normally I bring these things out slowly, but I have some stuff here which I think is pretty interesting and it, it gives me some hope that uh, there might be some interesting thunder eggs out here in southern Utah. Um, I'll give you just a quick little peek here. We just got back from this locality and uh, well, look, look at that. If that isn't just a thunder egg. Huh? Look at that. And another good example. I mean, obviously we have like this, that rhyolite. Kind of looks like there's some opal in there. I haven't tested any of these. You can kind of see Thunder Egg. Uh, this one I thought was interesting. Um, I haven't seen anything that's like super primo <laughs> material, if you will. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would say so far what I've seen is on par some other places. And we'll have to go back and spend some more time do some digging. I'm going to cut up a bunch of this stuff. But, uh, look at that. And we'll look at this under the UV here in a little bit. I'll grab my lights so I don't forget. There we go. We'll use some lights here before uh, this episode is done. Um, well, news. <laughs> um, a couple of things. Um, cutting edge supply who you might have, yeah, I don't know, maybe you're aware of them, maybe you're not. Um, cutting Edge Supply, Cutting Edge Store, Lapidary, whatever the name is they were going by at the time, they died and went out of business. Now, you know, it's not probably in best taste to, uh, I don't know, rub it in their nose, rub their nose in it, whatever, but um, I called it. <laughs> I believe I called it back in Saturday Night Special number 177 when we talked about Loretone going out of business. I was like, there's some other companies not doing too well, and uh, Cutting Edge Supply is one of them. If you're not aware, they're basically like budget version of Kingsley North, where um, they tried to get ahead by undercutting in the market, having the best prices around, and, uh, you know, they sponsored some YouTube channels and sure enough, um, reports started coming out that they were hard to get a hold of. You would buy from them and then they like wouldn't ship your order right away. And uh, they did a lot of like sketchy things like that. And uh, sure enough, here's their website currently. It's just like a, what, like a splash page. Um, they're... Google um, business page or whatever says that they're closed. And as far as I can tell, they are done. They're done. Um, they sold very little like original anything. A lot of what I think they were doing, and this is the, the problem with that, this business model, is that they would like just be a middleman. You know, it'd be like, oh, you could order, you could buy Co like Covington Engineering, you could buy a Covington saw from them. Except they didn't have it in stock. Uh, it'd basically be like, they would place an order on your behalf um, and skim off the top, essentially. I guess I wouldn't, you wouldn't say it's skimming off the top. It'd be like, I have a special price break with Covington. So that thousand dollar saw that I'm selling, I buy it from Covington for $800. I collect $200 and pass it on to you. Or you could have just purchased it directly from Covington. They did a lot of that. They did a lot of that. Um, and just overall, they were, they were cruddy. They kind of sucked. It's hard. Like, I'm, on one hand, I want to support small businesses. Um, but it does seem more often than... <laughs> <laughs> than not. They're the ones, well, I can't say they're the ones that are always going out of business, but, you know, I wanted to like cutting edge supply. I wanted to like this idea of, oh, more competition, more options, but they just didn't do a good job and they flopped. Unfortunately, I'm sure uh, 
towards the end, they were collecting orders and money and then not shipping things out. And then they just went like belly up, um, which that's unfortunate that so many companies do that. Like, um, I know that, I guess I don't know. It has been said that that is what um, MK Diamond, Baranka did as well. Uh, they shut down owing people money. Um, I don't know if Loratone did that. Um, and now Covington Engineering purchased the Loratone, although they will probably never ever get up to their, I guess the current, or the old level that people know lore tone. And that kind of brings up a bigger picture. Now, there's almost, there's just a couple of companies left that make lapidary stuff. I mean, who do you really have? Who is competitive in making cool things? Um, basically, it's Highland Park. <laughs> you know, um, it's Highland Park. Uh, Kingsley North has shown some promise with some of their machines, but, you know, they're really... Um, doing very little innovating. They're not like rebuilding old machines. They're just kind of been like, here's our six wheel. Um, here's our combo unit. Here's our version two of those things. <clears throat> I mean, it's really, it's, like them or not, it's Highland Park or nothing. You know, I mean, look at Covington Engineering, you know, they take like three months to build a saw for you because you buy and then they build and then they ship. And even still, side note, um, I have th wait, three or four emails over the past like two years from people that have Covington saws with twisted bodies. Like the whole box of the, the saw went and like, it's like cockeyed and twisted because they're made out of sheet metal. And they're made out of sheet metal with like rolled edges for support and stuff like that. And they do things in a way that I personally wouldn't do and wouldn't find acceptable. And you never hear about other saws like twisting. And once a saw body twists, essentially the saw is no longer usable, right? Like the carriage of the vise will never be able to line up with the blade. It's just not going to happen. This is not going to happen. Um, I mean... Diamond Pacific makes stuff, and they're another company that is starting to show the signs of... <sighs> are they on their last leg? I don't know. But I do know, from my own experience, is that they don't return emails. Um, they don't seem to return phone calls. And I'm not the only person with that experience. Other people have mentioned that as well, which is a... A sign that there is there an issue there? I don't know. I don't know, but I don't like it. They don't innovate. They're not making anything new. So really, it's like Highland Park or nothing. And if you saw um, Katie did rocks, she went and took a tour of the new Highland Park warehouse. Um, and uh, it looked like they're expanding. They're <laughs> doing good things. Whereas other companies are just like, good enough. And... I'm not going to give Highland Park a pass. Like, there's a number of things that they do that I do not like. They send out way too many machines that I would say are like a 95% complete build. You know, that's tough. Um, they have a, no have a number of problems in the past, especially with customer service. Um, they're by no means perfect, but... Um, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody else making as interesting love interesting things you know or trying to support us with the stuff that we need i mean really if you want a big saw as an example who do you have like you have nobody you have highland park um and covington and covington is like a no-go in my opinion um so you really have one company now we have one company which that kind of bums me out that we do not have the variety of things at our disposal that we once had in the world of lapidary. Okay, let's um let's shut off some lights. Let me show you this stuff real quick because it is very um fluorescent. So we are at the on the 395. Filtered, filtered light. Um, it's kind of hard to try to capture fluorescence on video. Um, we'll go mid-wave here, mid-wave. We get a little bit uh, less 
bleed over, but uh, I, the best thing that I have found for filming this is just to have the camera on full auto. And yeah, we run at a high ISO, but so be it. That's the nicest way to flip it between lights. And then we'll go down to our short wave, which the short wave is good. Um, very green stuff. Very cool to see. Um, wait, I'm going to pick that up. That's a nice piece. Nice, nice stuff. Let me show you something real quick. Okay, so this is the Lapidary Journal, April 1978. And, uh, well, look at the size of this magazine. This is a magazine, right? Like, this is massive because there is so much stuff happening in the world of lapidary. There were so many companies, so many options, right? Like, it was just... I want, I want somebody to be like, oh, check out the new Slab Master. <laughs> you know, like, I, uh, I long for these things, I guess you could say. Um, the ads in this are just fantastic, by the way. <sighs> Gemtech, made in Great Britain. Is anybody making um, lapidary machines in Britain right now? I feel like the answer to that's going to be no. Rock Rascal, what happened then? Beacon Star? Beacon Star, that was cool. <sighs> yeah, well, um, you know, I think we need more producers of things and less just like resellers. I'd be very happy if there's a never another cutting edge supply. If we only had Kingsley North as a light machine manufacturer and reseller of other products, and, uh, you know, it'd be great if there was a lot of competition in the market. You know, you had, let's just say, eight different lapidary machine manufacturers all trying to outdo each other, trying to beat each other on price, beat each other on quality, come up with new ideas, uh, one-upping each other, bringing costs down for consumers. Like, I don't see it happening, though. Not in the next, like, 10 15 years so uh yeah you know it's uh <laughs> if you time to start becoming your own machinist <laughs> i think that's the answer buy a welder right watch some youtube videos on welding maybe buy a uh like a small milling machine and a lathe and just build it all yourself because the plans are out there the pictures are out there the ideas are out there there's just uh i don't know i don't know well, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe someday we'll, uh, this area will be more thoroughly explored and I'll be able to share it with you on video. And uh, I'm going to try to get around to cutting some of this stuff and maybe that'll be on next week's Saturday night special. In the meantime, um, if you have ever want to try to find something really big to read, <laughs> Lapidary Journal 1978, I mean, it's like the peak of lapidary journal as far as size goes and uh you know it's like their buyer's guide and it's just awesome it's awesome well look, there we go genies titans right uh real quick what i'm gonna do just so you can see how little diamond pacific has changed anything um so we have let's see a complete titan 1,198, and I'll put up on the screen what that would be adjusted for inflation till today, and then their actual uh, retail price. Um, and uh, if my memory is still good, um, they pretty much track. So um, they've really uh, changed nothing. So where's, where's the Titan uh, 3.0? All right, everybody. Well... Thank you very much, um, and uh, go check out the website, currentlyrockhounding.com, and I will catch you in the next video.